All right, so we are all good to go. So again, good morning, um, everyone. Uh, here is another session for Azure Power Lunch. And today we will be taking a look at the Power BI Embedded. So quick introduction, I am uh, Malik Sony. I'm a Cloud Solutions Architect at Microsoft, and I will be presenting the session today. So first uh, thing is what is Power BI Embedded? Now, most of you are already familiar with Power BI. It's an analytics tool. And Power BI Embedded is an additional offering on top of Power BI. So it is for an ISV and developers to add the analytics and visuals or the reports into the applications. And that way, developer and ISV can distribute that without requiring a per user licensing for Power BI. And we will explore this more, so you will have much better understanding as we move forward. So Power BI has a different offerings. Uh, let's start with the Power BI desktop. This is the client tool that a developer or the business user can install on their laptop and creates the Power BI reports. It is licensed per user and Power BI Desktop as a tool itself is a free uh, for an ad hoc data exploration and creating some basic reports. But on top of that, we have a Power BI Pro. So Power BI Pro is also licensed per user and it is a self-service analytics tool, uh, but it adds an additional capability of collaboration and sharing the report and publishing. So if you're familiar with powerbi.com, uh, it's the website that supports the report publishing and so forth, workflows, that's all for you that, you need a Power BI Pro license. The next offering is the Power BI Premium. So we have heard a lot of feedback from field saying, hey, per user licensing is kind of a little bit of difficult. So we need an alternative solution. So Power BI Premium uh, is actually licensed by capacity. So it's an add-on to Power BI Pro. And it is the premium is for large projects, which requires the large scale data input, as well as ability to distribute the content without provisioning per user into the Power BI. Now, along with all these three offering, um, we also have a Power BI embedded. It is licensed by capacity, the same model as a Power BI premium. Um, the idea here is that the developer or the ISVs can build an application it could be a web application, it could be a desktop application, it could be the mobile application, and allow them to embed the Power BI report into their application. In that sense, the application is actually becomes a, a user interface for users to see the reports and interact with Power BI reports. One thing to note here is that the Power BI embedded, even though it's a license by capacity, uh, it still requires one Power BI Pro license for authentication purpose. In this case, the application which is hosting the Power BI embedded report is authenticating against the Power BI using that one Power BI Pro license. Also, Power BI embedded is hourly metered and you can purchase it via Azure portal. So you know that Power BI offering is the modern workplace offering, uh, but the Power BI embedded additional capacity which can be provisioned, provisioned into uh, from the Azure portal. Okay, so we will take a look at the quick workflow. So to create a report, we'll be using a Power BI desktop. To develop, um, we will need one Power BI Pro account and the general price around Power BI Pro is $10 per month per user. And for deployment, this, this the report that was developed uh, can be embedded into the application. And generally the additional capacity that we can provision in Azure, it starts at $1 an hour. And we will take a look at the different pricing tier in Azure as well. So today's demo focuses on a quick walkthrough of creating a Power BI embedded service in portal. Then we will take a look at the embedded setup site. This is a helper site for a quick start to create an embedded report. 
Next, we will take a look at the Power BI Embedded Playground. This is a GitHub repository which shows many different samples how you can embed your reports into a, an HTML based application. Then we will take a look at the sample.net application that I have created and um, embedded the project from within. So we will run the application. It's a browser based application and we'll see the, the embedded report in a custom app. And after that, um, if, we, if time permits, we can take a look at um, you can create a new report into the Power BI and update the web app to show that new report as well. With that, I will uh, head over to the portal. So I have created a resource group already and you can go and create a new resource called Power BI Embedded. So go ahead and click create. We'll specify the existing resource group. The resource name for Power BI Embedded is Azure PBI Capacity. Okay. And currently the West Central US the region and here is the sizing. So let's take a look at that. Now the SKU starts from A1 to A6 and it, it has a compute part of it and a memory part of it. The purpose of Power BI embedded additional capacity in Azure that anytime user requests a report, the report needs to be rendered somewhere and a compute resources are required to host that environment. This way we are specifying that hey Power BI I have an additional capacity. You can use it in Azure because the default capacity won't be able to fulfill my need so that please connect the Power BI rendering service to the Azure additional capacity. And there is a good documentation on how will you determine which SKU is right for you. So I will share the link later on, but the documentation walks through number of renderings, number of users you are expecting to the website, how big is a report, what are the drill down capability based on that you can determine which SKU is right for your needs and with any other azure services is, is pay as you go and also once the service is created let's say you don't want to use it for some amount of time there is an ability to pause the service of an additional capacity so you won't get charged for it so with this i will just go ahead with the a1 SKU and the power bi capacity admin so this is the admin person who is going to, going to be managing the Power BI additional capacity into the Power BI admin dashboard. So we're going to recreate. Okay. So we will come back to this um, in a few minutes, but let's continue on the walkthrough. So um, we have created the capacity. Um, I will show you how you can link that capacity between Power BI tool. So the next step is the Power BI embedded tool. So app.powerbi.com slash embed setup. This is the link um, which will guide you to create your embedding environment. Now, all, all that I'm doing here can also be done um, manually in the sense that you can do these steps individually, uh, but this is a very good tool to put together all the steps and guide user um, in a very easy to follow manner. So as soon as you land to this site, there are two options. One is that Power BI in your product or customized for developers. This is where the Power BI account will be used to embed the data. This account, this option essentially saying that you are embedding the report for customers. And the second option here is embed Power BI for organizations for internal users. So I will go ahead with embed for your customers option. Okay, and these are the different steps. There are total five steps, and you can see that um, first thing is to sign into Power BI. Um, as I said, there will be one Power BI account is required, so I already have set that up. Click on next. The second thing is that we need to register an Azure AD application. This Azure AD application uh, orchestrates and help in obtaining the authorization token and the report tokens. 
and then you can use that uh, application to coordinate with those flows. So we'll go ahead and give a name. Making sure that it's unique across all the different apps um, and the API access. So here you can granularly control what um, an application that you're registering with Azure AD can do with your Power BI uh, in terms of permissions. So there are read-only API permissions, there is a read and write permission, and then create API permission. These three different roles um, will be I will be walking you through in a next step, um, which will be more apparent that what these roles means. But as of now, I say, hey, when I create an embedded report, uh, I want to give user an ability to read the report data, but also they can also make changes and submit it back. And they may also create a new rec report uh, widget or plugins within that report. So I will go ahead and click register. So the third step is to create a Power BI workspace. So if you have played with Power BI, you know things are organized into the workspaces. So here we will go ahead and create a new workspace. create workspace. And then the nice thing about this uh, embedding setup uh, wizard is that it also can create a sample Power BI report. Uh, easy for you to just give it a try how it works. So here I'm going to say, yes, I want a sample Power BI report imported into the workspace. So what it is doing behind the scene is that it is taking a standard PBIX file and putting it, copying it into my workspace, importing into the Power BI. And the last step, and this could be tricky, is a grant permission. Now, remember we registered a Power BI application which requires admin consent. So whoever is going through this wizard has to be have a proper permission on Azure AD to grant the consent. Otherwise, it will probably give you an error saying, hey, you do not have permission to grant the consent on this application. So since I am the admin on my tenant, uh, I will be able to grant the permission. So we'll go ahead and click grant permissions. And then this is what it comes up. I'm going to select my account. And these are the permissions that we are explicitly telling the user saying, hey, um, these are all the permissions that we will be using on behalf and say accept. OK, so once this step is done, essentially what you have done is you created a workspace in Power BI, established a Azure AD application uh, as well as granted the consent. So you're all good to go. Now, one more good thing about this wizard is that it allows you to download a sample application. So I already have downloaded an app, so we'll be running it through shortly. But few things to note is on this wizard, make sure you make a note of your application ID. This is the Azure AD app, app ID. Your workspace, this will be the workspace in Power BI, and your this is your workspace ID and the report ID. So when you embed a report, in Power BI embedded, uh, it's driven by a workspace ID and report ID as an identifier. So make sure you note down this information. Okay. So before we move on to uh, the sample application, here is an additional place where you can play play around with Power BI embedded. So it's a Microsoft GitHub IO. It's a GitHub pages for Power BI JavaScript demo. And we can take a look at one sample report here. So click on try. Okay. So the idea here is that this site allows you to play with different options and give you the code, which is you can drop into your HTML pages with all the configuration. So if you don't have any environment, certainly you can could go to this site now and you can play around with that, how it's going to look like and how what options are you going to utilize? So. In this case, I'm going to say run, and this should render a Power BI sample Power BI report underneath. Now, this report is the embedded report, right? So, what we are looking here is view mode. So, as a user, uh, I information. If I want, I can filter the data, a standard toolbar, but nothing else I can do. The second mode you can set as an application developer to Power BI embedded is you allow your users to edit data. Then you can set edit mode and run. And now you can see that an additional toolbar has appeared here. This allows me to save the report, export it, and organize and, and embed additional text, as well as you can see that the kind of a similar full view 
of the visualization is also available. So if I want to change or add anything, I can certainly do that. The third option is a create mode. And the create mode allows user to create the, the report elements along with the editing it. And remember the edit mode and create mode both allows you to save the report and your changes which you make here or the user makes here can also update your original Power BI report as well. So it's a two way connection. Okay. So with that, uh, we can take a look at the Visual Studio application. But before we do that, let me show you the sample report in Power BI. So here is my Power BI uh, portal. And you can see that under workspaces, this is the workspace that I created. And under report, the US sales analysis, this report was created by the wizard, the onboarding embed tool. So this is the sample report. And I can certainly do and play around in, in the Power BI portal online, or I can do it, I can open this report into my Power BI desktop as well. So this is the report that we will be embedding into our application. So for report to be embedded, you need a workspace ID, this, and then you need a report ID, this, two identifiers you will need. So with that, we will switch back to the VS Visual Studio. OK. And by the way, this is the same sample application uh, which was provided as part of the wizard as a download sample application. You, all you have to do is just download it, run it in v Visual Studio. Uh, Power BI embedded is essentially a JavaScript component, right? So in my view here, the embed report CSHTML file, I have added an additional script tag. This script tag, what it does, it actually creates an embedded iframe from within. But the good thing to know about this script tag is that the configuration block here, the token is acquired via Azure AD application. There are two types of token, the access token, and there is also a report token. Um, also the embed URL and permission. So here I'm setting that the user has all the permissions. So create, save, edit, and then read as well. Once you put this script or embed into your HTML file, one thing you need to make sure is go back to your config file and then provide your workspace ID into the configuration settings as well as your report ID. This I have obtained earlier or I can obtain from Power BI Online. Another thing to note here that remember I told you about the One Power BI Pro license, that that information will go under the master user information. So that master user uh, element will have your Power BI username and password. So with that, all I have to do is just run the application. This might take a little bit to warm it up. OK, so I have three different options here. You can embed report. You can also embed a dashboard, the Power BI dashboard, as well as you can embed a tile. I guess the report is the most important aspect here. So click on embed report, embedded report. And you can see here, this is my custom web application. And I am embedding a full Power BI report here. So I can interact. I can probably provide additional filters. Right. And I can certainly do what I can in Power BI online uh, or the Power BI desktop. So now we will go back to the Power BI again and try to change the report. So under the reports, I have this second report, which is just the demo report. And let's say I want to embed this report into my application. So all I need is a report ID for 740. Can take that. And that's it. 
rerun. And then click on embed report again. And then you can see that you can see the, the second report that I have embedded it on it. Okay, so this concludes the, the presentation and I will open it up for questions. All right, so any questions, guys? Hey, this is Corey Green. So yeah, my, my question is, why is the embedded part of this Power BI component so cost costly with that A1 instance? So the cost, the SKU uh, determines that how much of your work needs to be done and resources needs to be allocated. And Another thing you have to keep, I, I won't be able to answer why it's expensive, but I think what I would be able to relate is that if you look at the overall Power BI licensing and the segment where Power BI is put together, the additional capacity gives you a way to provision it and allow customer to control the cost, right? So with additional capacity, you have a choice that which SKU you select, as well as you want, uh, you have a choice how long you want to keep it running. You can certainly pause the services as well. So I think it just provides you an additional control over the added capacity over the Power BI rather than a flat fee uh, or flat monthly charges. Hmm. And also Power BI embedded are primarily geared towards ISVs. And uh, since we don't charge per user licenses, that cost has been embedded into the SKUs. Yeah, so the assumption there would be that that ISV or that person that's developing this would be doing it for multiple customers, have a lot of reports, and so they'd all be utilizing that same pool that was created that's got that that cost per month that's starting around 700 or so if it was running full time. That is correct, and you explain it very clearly that once the developer ISV creates a report, it's been used by many different customers. Um, one question I have is, as far as interoperability, are there ways that you can call from the code side to, let's say, load the report with a certain tab or page open or things of that nature? Yes, there there is. So I don't have the deck, uh, the, the slide which visualize this, but the way it works is there is this iframe component and there is a Power BI, um, Power BI NuGet package which allows you as a developer to interact with that report. And the Power BI NuGet package is a standardized interfaces on top of the iframe. So yes, you can certainly control from programmatic away. You have an ability to reach to within the report and manage things. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. As a, a follow on to that, uh, earlier questions around the, the uh, compute instances. Um, that's like a, an allotment of a, of hardware that's being spun up uh, for hosting the reporting. Uh, is, is, as the uh, ISV or the customer of that, can I also uh, like isolate that on my network or um, do other intelligent things in the background, or is it pure SaaS? It's uh, it's very it's pure SaaS. Let me show you. We didn't we never took take a look at the the provision service, right? So. If we go back here, go to resource, this is an additional capacity look like. And this is the option where I was showing that you can pause this service and you won't be charged for it, right? So it's a pace you go and once the service is active, you can do that. Um, other things you can do is just change the size, right? 
Uh, in terms of your question about probably network isolation, um, I think it doesn't have that capability yet, but what you can certainly do is from within your Power BI workspaces, you can specify that which capacity you want to use, utilize, right? So you can organize your content in such a way that customer A has its own workspace, which is associated with additional capacity in Azure. And yeah, second so workspace could have. I don't have to do any care or maintenance for VMs or uh, network. Absolutely. Or any of that. Wonderful. Yep, 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 absolutely. The, all the compute resources are provided um, under one umbrella for the additional capacity. Okay. So there was always a... Yes, go ahead, please. Is there any alternative for uh, development or test, or if I have a, a small use case, I don't need a 3 GB of cache. Um, is there any cheaper alternative to explore the product? So the, I, I, I think the, if you just want to explore the Power BI, uh, you can just go with the Power BI Pro license, $10 a month. And essentially what you get access to is this Power BI online. And as you can see that the Power BI embedded is nothing but just embedding a report into a customer application, right? So you have two choices. Uh, if you want to just explore the Power BI, you can just certainly get one license with Power BI Pro and can start designing your report. Second option is you want to explore the Power BI embedded, then go to this page here, this one, and you can see the, you can certainly have control over all the interactive JavaScript configuration whatever you want to test it out, you can test it out here, run it, make sure you, you're seeing the result. Um, and then when you have your own token and the URL, you can certainly point it to your own report as well. But if you just want to play with the sample, then the Power BI Embedded Playground would be the place to start. Okay. Could you please paste that uh, URL on the chat? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And we'll also put this URL as well. This is the embed setup. Okay. I think the key idea here is 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 this one, the the licensing piece of it, right? So it just eliminates the need to have per user license, or just require one pro license. But for your customer, they don't have to be created in the Power BI. Uh, the, the users don't have to be created in there. Um, all the authentication authorization for your customer can be uh, powered by your application in which you have embedded the report, right? So you can, you certainly know who the customer is who's trying to play around with this report, but Power BI doesn't know the customer because the way Power BI embedded connects to Power BI online is to one uh, single master account. So the flexibility comes in a way that your individual users of the report does not have to be uh, licensed users. Okay, any more questions? Is there any limit on the amount of reports or dashboards that you can have with Power BI embedded or in the amount of uh, connections that it accepts? So uh, those parameters, uh, there is no limit on the number of reports for embedded, right? So you have a workspaces and then in workspace you reference that report to the Power BI embedded. Now in terms of a, a connection limit, that's, uh, there is a good documentation I will be also sending it out later this is that that PDF documents provides the the insight into how you should provision your capacity, the A1 versus A6, right? Because there are a lot of factors that has been given in there, which talks about how many renderings, what what's the complexity of your report, how many drill downs you have in it, so forth. So once you consider those limits, um, that will match with the skew. So certainly there are limits on skew, 
but it's not obvious in terms of connections. It, there are many different parameters that it, it depends on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I think we're right up on time. So thanks everyone for joining this session and uh, happy to present this content. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.